right, well, um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, good to be back with you at the State Control Centre. Today I'm joined by the Health Minister, Mary Ann Thomas, Emergency Management Commissioner, Andrew Crisp, Tim Wiebush, Wiebush from Vic SES, and Michael Efron from the Bureau. So I'm going to provide a few updates, and then Minister Thomas and I will speak about some investments that we're making to ensure that the many, many flood impacted communities are getting that continued support, that initial support as quickly as possible. Today's announcements are in relation to support in particular for local education and local health care needs. While of course we're seeing some of the flooding recede in areas and those communities are undertaking recovery activities, we are still experiencing major flooding and warnings in the northern parts of our state. I know that there are many communities that are banding together. We are seeing amazing stories of people turning out to lend a hand in many communities across the state. Um, some of the initial support we're announcing today for flood affected areas is about helping people get back on their feet as quickly as possible, ensuring that they are returning to some form of normality and making sure in particular that kids are continuing with their education, even though we are very conscious that it is a very stressful time for many of them. Today we are announcing a $77.3 million health and education recovery fund to support the estimated 320 schools and 28 health services affected by the floods. Alongside this support continue, con includes support for our TAFE sector, training continuity, fund replacement for ed educational needs such as equipment um, and also any temporary infrastructure needs that will enable people to return to those facilities. Everyone affected in government school will see um, their immediate remediation costs covered. So things like repairing floors, uh, roofs, replacement of furniture um, and the like. Grants of $10,000 will also help schools who have had outside damage such as playgrounds damaged. The fund will also deliver extra relocatable buildings for schools that have lost classrooms, um, ensuring that students can return to their, their local school if they can. Um, the investment will also deliver uh, direct relief to um, students also in the non-government sector. There will be support for new un uniforms, shoes, stationary packs and as well as uh, internet dongles and tablets and devices to replace items that kids may have lost. Students in Rochester, this is a school that has been badly damaged and it's expected to perhaps endure more flooding over the coming days. So these kids will receive a laptop and a USB dongle just so that they can stay connected um, and keep up with their educational needs and we are very conscious that it is a very difficult time for these kids so making it as easy as possible to stay connected to their school, to their friends, to their teachers is something that's very important. Um, schools that are closed for a longer period of time um, may involve students being relocated to other schools in the area and will be providing uh, buses to facilitate those arrangements. There are 11 TAFE campuses of GoTAFE, Wodonga TAFE and Kangan that have been um, subjected to damage or cut off from the floods and there's an $8.3 million fund that will support site assessment and immediate equipment replacement as well as securing extra work placements for the students who may have had those requirements disrupted. The investment will also deliver targeted support to the 500 staff and 8,000 students um, in the TAFE sector. Um, as well as those other issues such as uh, technology requirements, similar to how I explained for the school needs. Um, a quick update in relation to some of the flood updates, um, bearing in mind that I'll let uh, Tim go through some greater detail. We have 11 relief centres that are open and any details of people wanting to make sure they know where those are is the Vic Emergency website. There are currently 13 aircraft um, that are being utilised today across the state, including the two military Chinook aircrafts. So these are aircrafts that are all about assessing damage or uh, making sure that uh, a workforce can be relieved um, and also on standby for any immediate emergency needs, particularly in the community of Kerrang, as we know, is isolated by floodwaters and may be for some time. There are also 50 sandbag collection points across the state. We have about 450 roads closed today. 
Um, this continues to change hourly. The, the priority is on opening and repairing roads that are um, required for access, particularly for uh, food and grocery um, and emergency supplies. So they're the roads that we are wanting to get open as soon as possible, um, making sure that any communities impacted get that direct support and their needs met. Um, we have found and fixed 39,000 potholes um, uh, since the waters have been receding and the crews are out there doing a fantastic job in identifying and getting onto that safety measures as quickly as possible. Um, in relation to schools, the figures I have is that there are 51 schools and 63 early learning centres that remain closed who will uh, obviously all be beneficiaries of the funding announcement today. On the immediate emergency payments, we have received 22,000 applications for, uh, for that support and as of this morning we have processed over 8,000 of those. This is more than $6 million that has gone into the pockets of those people that have been displaced um, or impacted directly through inundation in their homes. So important initial payments ensuring that they can go and buy uh, necessities such as food, clothing, medication um, and the like. And we have a lot of staff on hand to process those applications as quickly as possible. Um, I do want to remind everyone that there is a lot of support available. The best place to get advice on what is best for you is the 1800 560 7060 number. You can be directed to all of the support, whether you are um, agricultural or business, um, they'll make sure you know where to go to get the support. They'll also give you advice on the federal grants that are available in relation to income support and some of the payments there. So if you're having trouble navigating all of the support that's available at this point in time, there is a one-stop shop with people on hand to not only direct you to your financial support, but also look after your health and wellbeing. And if you just want to chat, please ring them. They are trained counsellors and they are there to help you. Um, in the coming days, we know that the threat is not over and obviously Michael will be able to provide some more detail in relation to that, but we know that there is more rain forecast in the coming days. And again, the strong message remains, please pay attention to the information that is being provided, heed the warnings and please follow them. Again, I do want to uh, end with just my immense thanks to the um, enormous effort that our emergency services personnel, our support services, our government departments and indeed um, our volunteers and local communities that are just going over and beyond. I know everyone is looking out for one another. Floods go for a long time um, and this we are in this for weeks and months and so people need to be looking after one another and looking after themselves. Fatigue will set in. Um, but at the moment, there is so much effort and so much attention um, that I'm really grateful for all of the work that is supporting the people that have been impacted um, in some of the very stressful times. We really are seeing the best of many, many people um, in our communities and I'm so very grateful. So on that, I will pass over to the Minister for Health, Marianne Thomas, who will take us through greater detail in relation to the health package announcement today. Thank you. Oh, thanks everyone and good morning or good afternoon. Um, what we have seen across Victoria is that 28 of our health services have been impacted by the floods. The primary impact has been to do with staffing. Of course, our healthcare workers live in the communities that they serve and they too have felt the full impact of the floods and have needed to take time out to uh, care for family, to look after their property and so on. I want to take this opportunity to thank all of those health services, both in other parts of regional Victoria and indeed in a metropolitan Melbourne, that have lent their healthcare workers. People have put their hands up to go and help out uh, at this time of need in rural and regional Victoria. Um, our focus obviously has been on continuing to, main, um, continuing to maintain uh, health care and assistance to those that need it wherever they need it and this will continue to be our focus. So the announcement uh, today is in relation to some infrastructure funding. This is really about um, short, sharp and urgent works that can ensure our health services continue to operate. So uh, $10 million is being made available. It's about getting it out the door as quickly as possible. We expect that this will be taken up by health services that need to replace generators 
water pumps, they might need to set up marquees and so on. So it's just about a quick, um, a quick response to ensure health services can operate now. Obviously, uh, we've seen that some services have been significantly impacted. Uh, and of course, we think about uh, Rochester Health Service, uh, Rumbalara in Shepparton, and indeed some other services, where we'll need to take time to fully understand the impacts. But I want to assure our healthcare workers, um, our health services, and indeed our communities, that we stand beside them for the long haul uh, during this flooding emergency and that my focus will continue to be on ensuring that Victorians, wherever they are, are being well cared for and are accessing the health uh, care that they need. Uh, like Minister Symes, I want to thank all of the workers on the ground and say, look, you must look after yourself at this time. I know our healthcare workers, of course, have been under relentless pressure uh, during the COVID pandemic and are now facing into floods. So I thank them uh, so deeply for all of their work and their, the enthusiasm and the care and the compassion that they continue to show. Uh, but again, I send this message to our healthcare workers. We need you to look after yourself, take that time for your family and for those that are experiencing the full impacts of the flood. Our thoughts are very much with you, but our government will be there with you now and for the long haul. Thank you. I might now hand over to Tim Weebush. Thanks, Minister. Good morning, everyone, or afternoon. Uh, as we've seen, the, the flood emergency continues, particularly along the Murray River region, and I'll speak specifically about some of those communities. But what we're about to see in the next 24 to 72 hours is storm activity crossing the state. And Michael Efron from the Bureau will speak to that shortly and then take your questions at the start of our question time. With those storm activities coming through in the, the next 24 to 72 hours, we're likely to see flash flooding in some parts of the state yet again. And so we can't emphasise enough that if you come across flat, flash flood waters of any kind, do not attempt to drive through them. We've actually seen a significant reduction in the number of rescues in recent days, and we don't want to see that escalating again. Our rescue services are, are there to support those communities, particularly in the flood prone areas, and being able to support them at this time. We don't need to be unnecessarily tying them up with people attempting to drive through flood waters in the next 24 to 72 hours. Across the state, uh, going from west to east, if we start on the Loddon River at Kerrang, as we've been talking about for some days, we're now expecting the peak to occur at Kerrang this afternoon at around about 78 metres. Um, that will see the, uh, the water up and around Kerrang and isolated now for a period of seven to 10 days. And potentially with some of this additional rainfall, we may see some renewed rises as we head into the early parts of next week. Uh, but as we've spoken about before, the power station there for this major flood, even though it's kin to what we saw in January 2011, will still uh, be dry this time round because of the levee that now exists around that infrastructure. At Rochester, we've got good news there where we're now back at minor flooding. Um, and that will continue to be that way over the next few days. Um, but if we do see some of this storm activity continue to fall over the Campaspe catchment um, on a regular basis, we could see renewed moderate flooding potentially at the upper end uh, Sunday into Monday uh, and through to Tuesday at Rochester. But at this stage, we're certainly not expecting to see the floodwaters that we see, saw go through Rochester last week. On the Campaspe River at Echuca, um, we saw obviously that peak uh, last week at 96.25 metres and it is now back at the moderate flood level. With the rainfall that we're likely to see uh, over the next few days, we could see that uh, renewed flooding occur around that moderate flood level yet again, but also with the impacts of the Murray River, um, seeing the Campaspe River back up for a period of there. And so again, we could see quite high moderate flooding on the Campaspe River in and around Echuca. But obviously the more significant impact to Echuca in the next um, 24 to 72 hours is going to be on the Murray River. 
So particularly for those communities from Barma to Lower Moira into Echuca, there is an emergency warning for evacuation. Again, we've said numerous times, this is the most serious warning that we can issue. And we are asking people to take action now um, to take themselves away from that threat of major flooding. Um, at this stage, the Bureau is forecasting that uh, the Murray River will reach the major flood level of 94.8 at Saturday. Um, and it has now come forward a little bit from where it was yesterday, it being a peak around 95 metres on Tuesday to being overnight Sunday and through Monday. But it will remain high at that level for many days. Then we're going to see the, uh, the waters head down to Chirumbri and also to areas uh, near Kahuna and all the way through to Swan Hill. Um, we're expecting to see those floodwaters, particularly around Chirumbri, um, peak around the major level at the 1993 October uh, levels in that area. Before we then start to see the floodwaters at Swan Hill, we believe by the end of this month. So sometime around the 28th or the 29th of October in and around Swan Hill. It will then take several weeks before we actually see that flood peak go through the likes of Robinvale all the way through to Mildura. Um, and Mildura at this early stage we're indicating could be seeing that uh, flood levels in and around um, the middle of November, but will again extend for several weeks uh, through to the end of November. So we've still got quite a way to go uh, for those communities on the Murray River. Up and around uh, the Goulburn River, obviously, uh, as we spoke about yesterday, there's good news there now where we're back to watch and act messages, but asking people to avoid what were those flood areas around Marupna, Shepparton, Kyala, and also Murchison. Um, we're asking just that locals are in there at this point in time. It's not the time for sightseeing around our flood affected communities. Um, but we could see with uh, some of the renewed rises um, between Monday and Wednesday, again, that upper end of moderate flooding um, goes back through some of those communities around Murchison and through to Maroopna and Shepparton. At this stage, we're not anticipating that we will reach the major flood level of 11 metres, uh, which is good news for those communities uh, in that space. I'm now going to pass over to Michael Efron from the Bureau of Meteorology and then he'll start with our questions. Thanks. Thanks, Tim. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Michael Efron from the Bureau of Meteorology. So today the focus is more on uh, thunderstorm activity rather than the widespread rain that we saw across the state late last week. So in the last hour, we've already seen some thunderstorm development down across the southwest of the state. And we're actually going to see that becoming more extensive as we head into the latter part of this afternoon and the evening. And with those storms, the winds in the upper atmosphere are actually really light at the moment. So once those storms develop, they're not going to move much at all. So heavy rainfall leading to flash flooding, as Tim mentioned, is our main concern. With the activity today, we could see 20 or 30 millimetres falling in just a couple of hours. Some of those storms could actually produce totals in excess of 50 millimetres by late tonight. So really the focus of that activity is through parts of southwestern Victoria and then pushing potentially into the Melbourne area as well through the latter part of this afternoon and then I think we'll even see that storm risk continuing overnight into the early part of Saturday. So really quite a, an active period of thunderstorm activity across the state over the next 12 to 24 hours and then as we head into Saturday afternoon. We do see that activity starting to contract to eastern parts of the state, but then redeveloping over northwestern Victoria into Saturday afternoon. Sunday, we do see pretty settled conditions for most of the state. Still some storms across the north of the state uh, late Sunday, but then Monday, it does look like another rain bearing system moves down from New South Wales and potentially producing more of that widespread rainfall uh, on Monday and then even uh, into the early part of Tuesday as well. So thunderstorm risk in the short term and then rain again early next week. Happy to take questions. Thank you. That rain for early next week, is that sort of similar to what we saw at the end of last week? Is it going to be heavy? It looks like we won't see totals as large as what we saw last week. Still around the 20 to 40 millimetre mark and given how 
where those catchments are at the moment that could cause uh, river rises in, in those catchments that we're seeing uh, flooding in at the moment. Do you have any Certainly uh, keep a watch on our website for the latest warning information, but also just keep in mind that with a, a negative Indian Ocean dipole and a La Nina still in place, we're going to see these conditions continuing, at least I think for the next four to six weeks. So periods of heavy rain, uh, showers and storms uh, as we head into the early part of summer. Look, again, we've uh, been in a number of these communities and community meetings are continuing to be held each day in some of the flood affected communities, whether they're in the cleanup or early uh, recovery phase or whether they're in this response phase like Echuca and Kerrang and uh, communities as far as Swan Hill. Um, so we can't emphasise enough to know where to get your emergency information uh, through the Vic Emergency app through emergency.vic.gov.au and you'll now start to see in some of those warnings, some of the information about what this uh, rainfall that Michael's just spoken about could mean for the river systems over the coming days. But we are, again, expecting to see potentially minor to moderate um, flooding renewed on a range of catchments on and north of the divide, um, and maybe at the upper end uh, of moderate and perhaps touching on the low end of major for a few of those rivers that uh, we've still got major flood warnings out for at the moment. Look, we're hopeful that uh, that won't become uh, the situation, but again, until we see where the rain falls um, and whether it's consistently over those three days on the same catchment, we could see scenarios where we move to watch and act, which is the warning level that we ask people to really take notice of, monitor their conditions, be prepared to act, start lifting things into to higher locations in their home, and again, be alert to your conditions, listen to your emergency broadcasters, make sure you're checking the Vic Emergency app on a regular basis, because there's every chance that we may need to go to a higher level, being the emergency warning level, um, in the event that uh, we see rainfall that perhaps exceeds the current forecast. And for this weekend, what's the typical advice for storm lines and any sense of power lines that you've got? Yeah, look, we're not expecting damaging winds uh, with these current storms that are coming through. Um, our biggest risk is really around flash flooding and again as we've seen uh, in the early part of this most recent event we saw significant numbers of people attempting to drive through flash flood waters tying up our uh, emergency responders unnecessarily. Uh, again we know the single largest killer of uh, flooding in Australia is people attempting to drive through flood waters so if it's flooded forget it. How much extra unneeded stress does that put on emergency services people Look, when we see uh, vehicles entering into floodwaters, particularly in our metropolitan areas or some of our more urbanised areas, whether it's around Ballarat, Geelong, Bendigo and other locations, it's taking emergency service workers away from those locations that really need that support now, whether it's the townships of Barmer through to Echuca, whether it's the townships um, all the way along the rivers that are in major flooding at the moment, that's where we'd rather uh, place our emergency service resources rather than having to respond to people in some of our urbanised areas as a result of that flash flooding. And how are services on the ground? It's going to be for two weeks. Are they at a point where their, their infrastructure is set up and they're in a good position or are they starting to sort of run out of gas for ahead of some more peaks? Look, we've seen an amazing amount of energy and effort by our emergency responders and a, a really big call out to our SES volunteers in particular and particularly um, Tim Williams and his team at Rochester who have done an amazing job uh, through very trying circumstances where many of their members have also been impacted by this flood very much directly. They're still there, still supporting their community, but we're rotating other crews in and through those areas to make sure that they can get some rest, they can deal with the flood impacts. And we've had uh, contractors and the like in there supporting them at their SES unit, which was flooded during the event as well as some of their, their private residences. But we've had terrific support from all of our agencies, whether it's the volunteers from CFA that are out there today, um, helping at uh, Rochester by uh, washing out homes that have been impacted, 
uh, whether it's the FRV and CFA crews that will be in the Maribyrnong region today and tomorrow again, helping out communities there, um, whether it's the life-saving um, teams that are helping us with our swift water rescue and their helicopter as well, um, the rapid relief team that have been out there supporting sandbagging, the Shepparton Search and Rescue Squad that again have been doing such an amazing job in the response in and around the Shepparton Marupna area. Um, we're really proud of our emergency service volunteers, not to mention our forest fire management, Fire Rescue Victoria, Police Council and others. Uh, just a quick one for the government, sorry. Um, uh, what more can be done for the farmers that have lost crops in the region? Yeah, look, so yes, yesterday there was an announcement for initial support for our agricultural sector. So um, grants of up to $10,000 for to recognise um, that we want to get money out as soon as possible. Um, but all of those affected communities have been activated as um, LGAs under our federal state relationships and we'll work on further support packages for the agricultural sector in conjunction with our federal colleagues. So is there any update on the federal funding side of that? Yeah, look, what they need from us is just uh, regular advice on the impact um, and we'll continue to provide that advice. But what's important is that it has been activated. Um, those local government areas that have been impacted by water have been agreed to by the Commonwealth as eligible for funding and we'll now work on those packages and have more to say in the coming days. But what I can say is that we have um, available now, um, applications can be submitted now for that initial uh, $10,000 that um, is available to all of our primary producers that have been impacted by the floods. And for, for the farmers that might feel like maybe they're just outside of the, the areas that have been um, described for the federal government, is there a way for them to, to put an application in? Is there a process for them to try and get funding? Yeah, look, we've been providing regular advice to the federal government about the impacted areas and they continue to uh, expand their list for eligible councils in, in theirs. Um, in relation to what they want to do, but in relation to the joint funding arrangements, there um, all of the councils that have been impacted by flood water, water, in my view, have been added. And if there's any that are left out, that it is certainly um, we we continue to add them um, as they are impacted. But um, everybody that is being directly impacted now should be eligible for that funding. That. Um, uh, we have at the state level um, and they are all in consideration for the joint packages with the federal the federal government but I would encourage any primary producers that have been impacted by the floods and I've seen significant damage across the state whether it's livestock crops um, uh, wineries and the like so um, anybody that has been impacted now we are all eligible for the state funding um, and applications are being taken from today it's been pretty tough for farmers and a lot of them are on the brink. Is, have, has the government got a message for them that you know are really on the edge right now? Yeah, look, I, um, as a former agricultural minister, and I'm joined by Marianne Thomas, who was agriculture minister after me, and so in the, the four years of, of this government, um, we know our farmers have been doing it tough. When I started, they were experiencing drought. Um, and so what's important, we know as a government, is to get out there and talk to our farmers, understand their needs, um, and help them respond to the impacts of the, the severe weather events that we've been having in recent times. Many farmers are fantastic business operators. They know the weather better than anyone. You want, you want to understand the weather, you ask a farmer, they can point you to the numerous amounts of um, apps and the like, and Michael's left the room now. Um, but uh, they are experts um, in, in weather. They know the impact on their businesses, but this will hit hard. I know that it was going to be a enormous bumper season for many farmers, and some of them will see that, um, you know, that hope what they're anticipating washed away. Uh, we know they will need support um, and we are focused on that. Um, they are a topic of conversation across government, not just with myself, but Minister Tini as the Minister for Agriculture, continuing to bring information that she's seeing on the ground. I'm meeting with farmers on the ground um, as well and we'll continue to have those conversations with the federal government for the support for farmers. Um, there's also concessional loans and the like. So there's, there's a, there will be dedicated packages for our primary producers right now and continuing to be developed.